Before we get going on this video, I just had a reminder that there is a competition going on, a little contest between friends, where if you want a VAC table, go ahead, watch this video right here, and I will give you a VAC table. All you need to do is comment your name on this video. I will put it in on the description, not this video, the video of the giveaway, and I will enter you in with a random name generator, and what that'll do is that'll put you in, and if your name is called, you're going to win a 12 by 12 uh back table so if you want in watch this video it'll also be in the description and good luck now back to your regularly scheduled program what's going on my beautiful people Iggy here with Faltech Unlimited I've got a pretty cool build for you today and uh, should be actually relatively quick it's gonna be it technically it's an outside the waistband it's gonna be a pancake style uh, two-piece but it's gonna have a little bit of a twist to it and uh, I'm not going to show it or say it right now, but you'll see it in a second. But since it's going to be an OWB, I need to go ahead and make a retention plate because I need to. I don't have one that fits this particular style. So this is the end of the muzzle, and I'm going to come out. And I like it, you know, to look pretty, pretty good. So we'll do that. I'm gonna cut that out, and then we'll put this together. Let's cut, check the fitment, I like it. And let's go ahead, get the tape off of this real quick. If you see previously, I bondoed the serrations in the slide, so we don't have to worry about that. And let's tape it. five right there and oh my god I tore it instead of cut it with scissors because right here you're not gonna see anything all right get this side Right. Now, we need our tidbit of a blocking. Wherever I put it, right there. And that's going to just boop right there. Right. And because we're doing an outside the waistband, technically, I'm going to throw this guy on here. The only purpose this makes, other than it makes it just a little bit stronger, is it helps guide the muzzle back in. It's not needed. It is, like I said, it does help in the strength department. And I personally like the way it looks. So that's why I always do that on my outside of the waistbands, unless it's uh, light bearing. I don't do it on light bearing because I figured um, it actually, for some odd reason, you can notice a little bit of a wiggle. So I don't do it on light bearing holsters. So this is pretty much all set except for the controls. Got the controls right here. And we'll throw that on there. And like I said, this is going to be a pancake, and it's just uh, just black, no bells and whistles. So I'm looking forward to the ending of this because I think it'll be I think it'll be nice. And I'll explain where I get the attachments that's going on this and then I'll do a link in the description for the website where I get them off of. 
and then you can go from there. All right, so that is it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some um, black to fit this. This has a, a sweat shield and it's gonna be fully adjustable for pretty much can't and all that stuff. But, so let's see here. That's a little too small. Let's get another piece. I know this would work, this is massive though. that that's perfect there and that's perfect there oh yeah all right heat it up as soon as these hit 350 degrees we'll pull it out and press it while that's in the oven i want to show you something i do a lot of gun shows i do a lot of traveling gun shows i do pretty much the gun shows throughout new england except for massachusetts everybody hates mass I do a lot of Maine shows. Uh, there isn't a lot in New Hampshire right now, but predominantly a lot of the shows I do are in Maine. And uh, what I love about being uh, a holster manufacturer and doing gun shows, and I've been doing it for so long that I'm pretty much, you know, we get invited to go over all the dealers' houses. After every show, we go out to dinner, you know, and then we get hotel rooms and movies and just, we just have fun. We have a ball. It's one big family. So it's pretty cool. So if you have the chance to do gun shows, I will actually probably do a video on a gun show. I have one this weekend, so I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll do a couple things. But I have friends. I have a lot of friends. And if you do gun shows, you make friends with the dealers. Now, I was walking around, and do you guys know what an, uh, a PTR is? So my buddy, John, owns a store in Maine, okay? And uh, he's like... I'm walking by his table, and I know he's building a new store. I said, John, you, you have a gun on your table, and she's interested in it, so let's work out a deal. I said, all right, what you got in mind? I'm like, well, you're asking $1,900. said, I'll give you $2,000 in holsters for your store. He goes, done. I said, oh, oh, okay. So uh, the girlfriend picked it up, and uh, she liked it, so now she owns this. Can you imagine just trading holsters? for a semi-automatic 9mm MP5 clone. How cool is that? And it came with the clear 30 round mags and then you can't have an MP5 without doing a uh, you know the the steel mags. So that was pretty cool. So now we're gonna be on a look at lookout for a uh, Beretta M9 because I already had the shirt for uh, a dummy that says now I have a machine gun ho 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 because we want to do like a um, a die hard theme this year or something like that. So anyway, so yeah, so the girlfriend got a new got a new MP5. It's got Magpul grips on it. It's full ambidextrous. How cool is that? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. So, at some point, you will see uh, her shooting it. But because I probably showed you that, I'm not going to get any monetization on this video, so We'll see. Totally worth it. She's stoked to have it. I thought it was pretty cool to put in her collection. And uh, yeah, so don't be afraid. If you are, I mean, gotta be good friends with them, I think. But don't be afraid. It doesn't hurt to ask. So $2,000 in holsters. I think the, greed, uh, the, the amount agreed upon actually was like 67 holsters. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't like right then and there after his store is built. Then he's like, yeah, start trickling them in, 10, 20 a month, whatever, don't care. Okay. So like, I'm going to fulfill that form. So you're going to look at 67 holsters, like I said. I'm uh, pretty sure that's what it's going to be. And, of course, they're going to be vac formed and all that. But how cool is that? So don't be afraid. If you see your dream gun, just ask. You never know. They might say, go ahead, take it. <laughs> Back to building we go. This came out pretty freaking slick I really like it and let's get to it I'm going to use the drill guide that has the uh, most holes on it what I'm going to do is first I'm going to pretty much draw out where the cuts are going to be real quick so this is going to be a full full sweat shield coming off and this is going to go here and then we know that I always come off leave a little bit 
and then go up. So right there. So we know this is going to go here because you need to have good purchase. And get our contour gauge. Just stick it on there so we know where it's going to end. Looks like I actually drew that one offset a little bit. That's why we use tools. All right. Run off that line, and we know it's going to be here. Here's the thing. I am not going to do it there. I just wanted to see where this is going to come out to uh, for this end. But this is actually, we're going to come up here a little bit. You can do it here. We're going to make this a little bit bigger. So we're going to come up, and we're going to do from around here. So let's get... Let's get this going. So, come out and we're going to go straight over and then we're going to leave the muzzle open. All right, and then we're going to have a rivet right there as well. And like I said, this one we're going to match right there buckle it up a little bit we've got this drawn and we're gonna come straight down angle this guy a little bit since uh, we're gonna be going above this we'll redraw this a little bit and you could come up and then you could go down a little and straight out. You could come up, you could go straight. It's literally however you want it, however you think it's gonna look. So technically we could go this way and come down. That may look pretty good. We could come up, bow down, go over, we can go over and then cut up. You know, there's it's just a whole bunch of different things we you can do. So we'll figure out what looks the best and run with that one. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and drill these holes. And to do that. I take my drill guide, line it up to where I like it, and then use these clamps. These are HDX clamps from Home Depot, and they are literally uh, a buck a piece. And we're going to drill quarter inch holes. And then what I like to do is if it starts to separate, throw a rivet in there and then put a clamp back on it. I'll go ahead and drill this side. I feel like it's a little close to the sight channel, so I'm going to bump it out just a little bit. Not a ton. You can still see it in the drill guide. And I'll go ahead and drill those. Take this apart now since we're not doing any more holsters, at least with this one. All right, take two rivets. So you're going to take both of them, line it up to where it was, and put a rivet on each side. Take your clamps and clamp each side again. That's so, in, that's so it doesn't move and drill your retention hole. Okay. Take out your rivets and as always, clean your holes. This is a countersink tool. You can find it on knife kits. It's only like five or six bucks. Definitely a good tool to have. Okay. 
you don't want to go too hard or for too long because you will drill all the way through and then your rivet will not sit anymore and you'll have a weak spot and let's put in the retention tell you what once you start using these guys you don't want to go back to screwdrivers it stinks otherwise you know it's like once you you know you're working outside in your cars for a while and then you get a garage yeah once you get a garage you won't work outside anymore on cars so and there's that we'll go ahead and rivet it So like I said, you could cut it a couple ways if you want. And I had a little bump here, come down and go over. We could go up a little bit, then straight down, or we could go straight across. I'm gonna do the bump and then come down and just see how that looks. It's not terrible. It'll be rounded out. I actually kind of like it.
here's the fun part. Take some rim oil and we'll clean this up. If you can't find rim oil, because Remington's out of business, you could also use ballastol, some great stuff as well. But I still have some bottles of rim oil, so you're gonna use them. And make sure you get all your pen marks off, or your pencil marks rather. All of our pencil marks were right there. All right. And don't forget, we sprayed the inside. We did already blow it out with a, uh, our air gun. It's loud for the camera, so I don't show that a lot. But I have a nice, massive um, air tank compressor. Actually, I'll show it to you. But this is the giant god i don't even know how many gallons i think it's 80 gallons could be more could be about 100 uh this is the uh snap-on signature series yeah thing's massive it's fun and i have to do some maintenance on it i gotta change the oil and uh probably do a belt on it don't know when the last time the belt was done and then i gotta drain it for any uh condensation buildup but yeah big compressor big like 5500 hundred dollar compressor that's all Anyways, we are back to this, and we're going to do, uh, we're going to prep one more thing, and I'm going to show you what I do with that one. So, this right here is a shoulder harness. Uh, not a shoulder harness, it's a chest harness. It is a uh, three-point chest harness. I've gone through, like, three different companies. This is the one I like the most. I love this one. This is by Rasco. You can find them at rasco.com. No, he's not paying me to say this. I love these. They're fully adjustable. That you just put it where you want it, lock it in place, and if you can see this, it comes with these holes. So what he does is he, I'm gonna assume, takes a quarter inch soldering iron and then just whoop, presses it through it, and that way it seals and pretty much quarterizes it. And what I do, take it a step further, is get a Appropriate rivet. Throw it in the press. And what that will do will reinforce it. So you can see, no rivet, rivet. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and do that. This is the front. So we'll have the head of the rivet on this side. Number two, and see again. And these are, uh, I believe, these are eight eight rivets that I'm using. This one doesn't want to go in. There we go. Throw that in there. And look at that. Now, Vivetti. Next, we're gonna do a quick check. That's nice. I like that. All right, so now let's get some hardware. All right, so we have quarter inch, quarter inch, and then these are 7 16ths, I believe. Uh, the same ones I use for um, retention, which is 0.4375. All right, so. What we're going to do now, the one with the clip, right, is going to go right, well, you go anywhere you want. This is where I personally put it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up from behind, put our quarter inch here. Let me go ahead and get Loctite in those three. And this is the reason why we do a little bit more rivets the uh, the end user can put pretty much put everything where they want all right so put that on the bottom Throw that in there we might have to use the taller ones oh, nope it's perfect oh yeah we're gonna use the longer screws 
All right, so go with the half inch screws. Don't do the 0.4375. So, half inch, I didn't take into consideration the thickness of both rivets together. So, where were we? This guy. Be at the bottom. All right, don't, don't tighten it just yet. And this is where it gets a tiny bit tricky. Let's continue. All right, so what we're gonna do is I throw it over, get this under you. This one, throw the piece under, throw that on. And that's gonna go right on the, technically it can go in any one, but I personally put it on the top. Okay, and then the last one, you could either put here or down here. So I personally put it down here, so this pretty much stays straight across. So we know that's gonna go there. We'll take our quarter inch from behind, a quarter inch here, lay it right here. Go ahead and tighten that. So, all right, that's it right there. And then to take it off, you hit the clip. And tighten it up where you'd like it. And there you go. So we know to put it on, your arm's going through here. You go under this arm. Click it in, adjust your stuff, and there we go. There is chest rig. So pull, go, and then get it right back in. Uh, you can take it and you can go this way with it. You can literally do it at your preference. I personally like this. Um, for the larger chested women, you could actually adjust it so it's underneath and pretty much you surround it. Uh, but this is, you know how it is here. I think I might have just twisted the back on one of them. Yep, I did. But regardless, so that is how you do a chest rig. You can get these harnesses at rasco.com. Uh, his harnesses start at $40. You can get them in different colors. I always do black and I only offer black. Uh, I haven't gotten into other colors yet because a lot of my customers, they don't do the other colors. But if requested, I can. So here is the black. And like I said, it's extremely comfortable. It is adjustable to your liking. And it's an easy way to make money. <laughs> yeah, I like this. A lot of people use these for uh, hiking, snowmobiling, and believe it or not, a lot of my friends have these for their motorcycles. So. And they like them. They are comfortable. And they help with your moves. But, again. Have fun. Build stuff. And always respect the hustle.